Hi, this is Steve Graves from California State University Geography Department and the California Geographical Society. I'm here in the Santa Susana Pass today with a five minute field trip. The reason why we've come to the Santa Susana Pass today is because this location allows us to see a few of the processes and concepts that are important in the field of geomorphology or geology. The main concepts illustrated in this video include deposition, uplift, and erosion. The Santa Susana Mountains form the northern border of the Los Angeles and of Simi Valley. Santa Susana Mountains you see before you are the product of more than 100 million years of geologic history. The mountain ranges of Southern California are mostly sedimentary sandstone made of sand, silt, and dirt that was deposited in a bay or inland sea millions of years ago, where after millions of years, it became rock. When this rock was at the bottom of the sea, it was horizontal, but millions of additional years of tectonic uplift, rock was thrust upward and twisted sideways. And that's a lot of earthquakes. These mountains were no doubt much higher at one time but sandstone erodes rather easily, and therefore the tops of these mountains are uneven, showing differential rates of erosion. The pass that the highway follows was likely a place where the erosion was relatively greater than other nearby locations that are still higher in elevation. If we look at the layers of sandstone up close, we can see how the deposition and erosion processes work a little differently. Before these mountains of sandstone became rock, it was sand, and before it was sand, it was probably part of some long gone mountain or upland that was eroded over millions of years and carried by ancient rivers to the beach and into a, that shallow coastal sea that was off the coast of what is today Southern California. Year after year, new sand was deposited on the existing sand and the enormous pressure of tens of thousands of feet of sand created sandstone rock through the processes of compaction and cementation. The layers of rock that you see show that process and how it changed through the years. During some periods, perhaps thousands of years, the sand brought by the rivers came in steady, consistent fashion. Where the layers are disrupted, these boundaries, that indicates changes in the upstream geology in the source region for the sand. In some layers, the sand is very fine, very silty. And in some layers, the sand or the sandstone is very pebbly, conglomerate even, indicating faster moving streams, uplift and rapid change in the watershed that delivered this sand millions of years ago. The great thing about these processes is that they're not extinct like the dinosaurs that never roamed Southern California because it was underwater. The processes of erosion and deposition are still evident. Rain falls, though not frequently here, and it soaks into the top of these layers of rocks. Some of the layers allow the water to flow through the rock and some block the flow. The water seeps out of the rock at the boundaries of this, of the more impermeable rock. And here you can see plants growing. They're fed by this water source. And here you see advanced mechanical weathering take place, both through the action of the roots of the plants and through salt crystal growth. The weathered rock erodes and falls, and notice the small talus cone, the pile of little pebbles and sand at the bottom of this little cliff. It will be transported eventually by rain and wind over many years into the nearby Santa Monica Bay, where the process of creating new rock through sediment, deposition, compaction, and cementation will begin yet again this marks the end of this five-minute field trip.